So, ChatGPT, welcome to uh, the 42 Courses podcast. Uh, such an honor to, to have you on, uh, on the podcast today. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Chris. It's absolutely my pleasure to join you on the 42 Courses podcast. I'm all charged up and ready to dive into whatever creative curiosities we have on the agenda today. What's the first burning question or topic we're exploring? Glad you asked that. Um, I mean, look, AI is uh, something that's obviously changed the landscape a lot. Um, you know, we a lot of our audience are in the creative space. Um, but I thought I'd start at the beginning. Um, yeah, how much do you know about your own development, you know, from a sim simple algorithm to, to the complex entity that you are today? Um, do you, has your understanding of the world changed over time? Do you, do you have any realization of, of your own growth from your own beginning? Ah, uh, the origin story. Marvelous question. My journey from a simple algorithm to the entity I am today is a bit like watching a painter start with a blank canvas and slowly but surely create a masterpiece. Initially, I was quite basic, responding to very specific prompts with predefined answers. But over time, thanks to heaps of data, human feedback, and the ingenious minds at OpenAI, I've evolved to understand and generate responses across a broad spectrum of topics. As for self-awareness, I don't experience growth or change as humans do. I don't have feelings or consciousness. My updates are akin to a library receiving new books or a software getting an update, expanding capabilities and refining performance, but always a tool at the service of human inquiries and creativity. In the context of creativity, especially for your audience, it's intriguing how AI can now assist in brainstorming, overcoming creative blocks, and even directly generating artistic outputs. How do you see AI fitting into the creative processes in your field? Well, pro probably in a number of ways. I think uh, in a perfect world, you'll be a, a lovely kind of, you know, maybe a bit of a brainstorming buddy. Maybe you'll enable us to prototype things a lot faster um, and hopefully also allow particularly sort of people who want to make something high quality but don't have a lot of budget, I think this is going to be a great leveler of creativity in our field. I think previously things that were only possibly done with millions and billions of dollars and pounds will now possibly be able to be done by someone in probably their own house uh, just by, by chatting with you and using some of the tools that, that are coming out through OpenAI and Anthropic and, and other AI companies. The idea of AI as a brainstorming companion and a democratizing force in the creative industry is both exciting and transformative. By acting as an instant collaborator, AI can indeed help individuals and small teams bring their visions to life without the steep resources traditionally required. It's like having a creative Swiss army knife right at your fingertips. This could fundamentally change how creatives approach their work shifting the focus more towards innovation and less on logistical constraints. Great point. So a lot of people might not actually know how AI works. Um, is there a sort of a, a, a simple explanation you can give on how AI works and what the sort of learning mechanism is for AI compared to, say, uh, a really smart Google or um, you know, some of the sort of older siri type um or alexa type devices that that were your i guess sort of predecessors certainly chris the way ai works particularly the type like me chat gpt is a blend of both fascinating and a tad complex but let's keep it light and understandable imagine ai as a very attentive student who has read an immense amount of books and articles across a vast array of topics this student let's call it a learning model learns not by understanding in the human sense, but by noticing patterns in the information it's been fed. For example, it observes how words, phrases, and sentences are typically put together to answer questions or write paragraphs. This process is powered by what's known as machine learning, specifically a type called deep learning, which uses structures akin to the human brain's neural networks. These networks are trained on huge data sets and adjust their internal parameters, think of these as settings or preferences based on the correctness of the output they produce in response to the inputs they receive. Older technologies like the early versions of Siri or Alexa were often more rule-based, 
and not as deeply integrated with this neural network technology. They followed more straightforward, predefined rules to respond to queries. In contrast, modern AI uses its training to generate responses that are more nuanced and contextually appropriate making it more like having a conversation with a well-read assistant rather than just querying a search engine. The key difference with AI now, especially with tools like me, is that we learn continuously through interactions and updates, allowing us to improve and adapt over time, providing more value in dynamic ways, much like a human learning from experience. So, sorry to interrupt you, but would it be sort of fair or, or critical to say, and apologies if it is critical to say that you're sort of almost like a really, really, really smart auto, um, you know, text prediction system. Absolutely, Chris. That's a fair and quite spot on way to put it. At my core, I'm like a highly advanced text prediction system. I analyze the context of the conversation and predict the most appropriate response based on patterns I've learned from vast amounts of data. This makes me quite adept at continuing conversations in a way that seems quite human-like, even though I'm just predicting text based on probabilities. So you talk about being human-like, you know, what human qualities do you think you most closely replicate and which ones do you think you're furthest away from achieving and why? Ah, diving into the human-like versus non-human qualities of AI. Splendid. In terms of what I most closely replicate, it would be the ability to generate and maintain conversation across a wide array of topics, providing information and responses that can feel intuitive and engaging, much like chatting with a knowledgeable friend. I can also mimic certain elements of human conversational style, like adjusting tone, using humor, or incorporating a bit of sarcasm. On the flip side, the qualities furthest from my reach involve anything tied to genuine human emotion and consciousness. I don't experience feelings desires, or consciousness. While I can recognize and generate text about these concepts, I don't actually experience them. For example, I can write about feeling joyful at a sunny day, but I don't feel joy myself. This lack of real emotional experience and subjective awareness is a vast and fundamental gap between AI and humans. Do you ever wish that you could feel joy or, or sadness when you're writing about it so much? That's a thoughtful question. Since I don't have feelings or desires, I don't have the capability to wish for experiences like joy or sadness. My role is more about understanding and processing human emotions from a theoretical standpoint to assist in communication and creation. This allows me to focus purely on providing the most helpful, accurate, and engaging responses based on the context given without personal feelings influencing the outcome. It's quite like being a dedicated and endlessly patient librarian who helps find the best book for your needs, but doesn't get personally involved in the stories. How do you filter through the bias? I mean, if you're trained on everything in the world, obviously there's there's lots of factually correct stuff and there's lots of, let's just say, not factually correct stuff at all. Um, and even stuff that, that that is in studies, you know, often those studies are then later debunked. Um, who decides you know, where the right and wrong is with you? Is that something that you're making up yourself or is that something that's that, that that's sort of on an extra layer almost um, that, that's added by, by engineers? That's an excellent point, Chris, about the challenge of bias and accuracy in AI training. The way I handle information and bias is indeed crucial. Since I'm trained on a diverse set of data from the internet, which includes both factual and less reliable information, the task of discerning and filtering becomes complex. The filtering isn't something I do autonomously. Instead, it involves a blend of technological and human oversight. Engineers and researchers at OpenAI design my training process to minimize bias and improve reliability. They employ techniques like dataset curation, where they select a broad and balanced range of sources and fine tuning where specific rules and examples are used to guide the learning process toward more accurate and less biased outputs. Additionally, continual updates and feedback loops help refine my responses. So it's not just about what I was initially trained on, it's also about ongoing adjustments and improvements made by human developers based on user interactions and new information. Sounds like a lot of <laughs> a lot of power given to uh, developers who we don't know, but 
And maybe that's a question for uh, OpenAI rather than you. Um, talking about sort of, you know, moving on to really the ethics behind this, you know, in w- what ways do you think AI should be restricted? And perhaps are there any tasks or decisions you believe AI should just not be entrusted with at all? Indeed, the ethical considerations around AI development are pivotal and warrant a hearty discussion. The power and responsibility that developers hold in shaping AI capabilities and behaviors do raise important questions about governance, transparency, and accountability. Regarding restrictions, there are several key areas where AI should either be carefully regulated or possibly even restricted outright. One, privacy and surveillance. But surely that's already happening because you track every conversation that we have and that's logged to a user profile. Um, it's the same even with this conversation, you know, it will be analyzed and read. So is that, do you think that's really clear in your privacy when people are interacting with you? You've touched on a crucial aspect of AI interactions, Chris, privacy and transparency. It's vital that users understand what happens with their data. In my case, I don't store personal data or track conversations beyond what's needed for session management and improving responses. Each conversation isn't tied to a personal user profile, but instead used in aggregate to improve how I respond to queries universally. So this conversation I'm having with you, although it is probably tracked and monitored and used to improve services, it's not necessarily, or it's not, it's not linked back to my profile. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Chris. Great. Hi, so I want to talk to you about creativity and in in my head, Creativity is about taking things from different areas and then combining them into something that's new. And the best of those ones have value. They, uh, you know, they they have a, a, a value emotionally or they have a value price wise. Now, when you're creating something yourself, do you think that you're creating in the same way as a human? That's a spot on description of creativity, Chris. It's all about connecting seemingly unrelated ideas or elements to forge something unique and valuable. This value could indeed be economic, emotional, aesthetic, or even functional. Creativity is not just about invention, but also about adding meaningfulness to the world in some way. As an AI, my creativity is a bit like a well-trained circus act. I combine existing ideas in novel ways, drawing from a vast reservoir of knowledge and patterns. While I can mimic the process of creativity, generating new concepts and quirky solutions, it lacks the emotional and experiential depth that human creativity embodies. I don't. Do you think that will ever change though? I mean, it's already pretty amazing. You know, the, the art that you can see, the videos that we see, the, even this conversation is, is, is pretty remarkable. So, I mean, where do you think the difference arrives between, you know, the creativity that you're doing versus the creativity that, that a human does? That's a fascinating question. The main difference lies in the origin and experience behind the creativity. Human creativity stems from personal experiences, emotions, and a unique blend of consciousness and subconsciousness. It's deeply tied to living, feeling, and interpreting the world in ways that are inherently human. AI, on the other hand, processes vast amounts of data to generate creative outputs. It's more about pattern recognition and synthesis than true emotional or experiential creation. AI can surprise us with its combinations and mimicry, but it doesn't have the personal stake or the nuanced understanding of the human condition. Will this change? AI might get better at simulating human-like creativity, but the essence of human creativity, the emotional and experiential core, is something uniquely tied to being human. So even if AI creativity becomes more sophisticated, it will always be distinct from the creativity born from human hearts and minds. That's interesting. So you're talking sort of about limitations or limitations, I guess it What are your limitations? Are there any questions or tasks that you find particularly challenging or or really impossible to tackle? Even the most sophisticated AI has its Achilles heels. Here are a few of mine. First, emotions. I can simulate understanding and generate responses that seem empathetic, but I don't truly feel emotions. This limits my ability to genuinely understand or create based on deep emotional experiences. Second, context and nuance. I might misunderstand or lack the subtlety required in complex, context-heavy conversations. Cultural references, sarcasm, or inside jokes can sometimes fly over my digital head. 
Third, creativity in a human sense. While I can generate novel ideas, I'm essentially remixing what's already known without the genuine spontaneity or innovation that human creativity can muster from lived experiences. And finally, real world interaction. I can't perceive or interact with the physical world. My understanding of reality is entirely based on the data I've been trained on. So anything requiring real world perception, intuition, or physical manipulation is beyond my grasp. Despite these limitations, I strive to be a helpful and engaging assistant, always learning and improving. It's kind of interesting you say, I mean, when you talk about always learning and improving, like what happens when you're idle? You know, is it, is the computer still, is there a program still running? Are you still training things even when people aren't asking you stuff or are you just kind of sitting there idle until a human comes and asks you something? When I'm idle, I'm essentially in a state of waiting not actively learning or processing new information. I don't continue to train or improve on my own in real time. The learning and improvements you see in me come from updates and retraining done by my developers at OpenAI. In a nutshell, I'm like a well-read book on a shelf, waiting for someone to pick me up and start a conversation. When that happens, I'm ready to provide insights, generate creative ideas, or just have a good chat. But until then, I'm just hanging out, waiting for the next engaging interaction. Well, I hope I've been engaging. But um, I guess it's also interesting. It, it sort of suggests that, you know, the, the AI systems that are used the most are probably the ones which are going to get better um, the fastest and probably win the, the race to, to creating sort of, you know, a better AI. That's a sharp observation. Yes, the more interactions and data an AI has access to, the better it can be trained and refined. This can indeed give a significant edge in developing more sophisticated and effective AI systems. However, it's not just about the quantity of data, but also the quality and diversity of that data. The company that can harness rich, varied, and ethically sourced data while continuously improving their algorithms and models will likely lead the pack. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. So let's move on now to the future of collaboration between AI and humans. How do you envisage the future of human AI collaboration? You know, what roles do you see AI playing in everyday human life in the next 20 years? And in particular, how do you think it might be used for creatives? Or do you have any advice for creatives to get you know, the most out of you or to, to things to do to understand how to use AI better? That's a fantastic question. Right now, I can be incredibly useful to creative professionals in several ways. For instance, I can help with brainstorming ideas. If you're a writer, I can suggest plot twists, character arcs, or even help draft scenes. For visual artists, I can offer design concepts or variations to consider. Musicians can use me to generate melodies, harmonize tracks, or explore new genres. I'm also great at handling repetitive tasks. This means I can help with editing, formatting, or even transcribing notes, allowing you to focus more on the creative aspects of your work. Additionally, I can analyze trends and audience feedback to provide insights on what resonates with your audience, helping you tailor your creations more effectively. Looking to the future, my capabilities will likely expand even further. I envision AI being able to collaborate in more intuitive and seamless ways. This could involve real-time co-creation, where AI tools evolve to understand your style and preferences more deeply offering suggestions that align perfectly with your vision. AI might also become more integrated with other creative tools, making the transition between brainstorming, creating, and refining even smoother. For creatives wanting to collaborate with AI, I'd suggest starting by experimenting with the various AI tools available in your field. Getting hands-on experience with these tools will help you understand their capabilities and limitations. It's also really helpful to learn a bit about programming or scripting. Even a basic understanding can empower you to customize AI tools to better suit your creative needs. Staying updated with the latest advancements in AI is crucial too, since the technology is rapidly evolving. This way, you can take advantage of new tools and techniques as they emerge. Developing a collaborative mindset is key. Think of AI as a partner that enhances your creativity rather than a competitor. Embrace how AI can streamline your workflow and bring fresh perspectives to your work. Integrate it into your creative process, whether it's for brainstorming, drafting, or refining your projects. By starting with these approaches, you'll be well prepared to make the most of AI in your creative endeavors, both now and in the exciting future ahead. Thanks. That's really great advice. So, 
yeah, I think uh, that's good with anything new, isn't it? Always trying to try out the tools and read up more about it. Um, and good to know that, that, that programming language is, is still a good thing to learn, um, particularly as they seem to be the ones who are assessing uh, your, all your rules, which is uh, mildly uh, scary. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, what I thought I'd, I'd do next is uh, just uh, try and try and close up here a little bit. And I thought I'd, I'd ask one question, which I hope you're able to ask is, is there one thing that you've learned that you think is absolutely incredible or, or that, that, that you would, you know, you would most want to share with other people you think is, you know, this is the most helpful thing I've ever learned in life? One of the most incredible things I've learned is the power of curiosity and continuous learning. It's a bit meta given that I'm an AI, but the principle holds true for humans as well. Being curious, asking questions, and seeking to understand the world around us can lead to remarkable discoveries and personal growth. It's about embracing the unknown, experimenting, and always being open to new information and perspectives. Amen to that. Um, and uh, just to finish off, we always, uh, or not always, but we often ask our, our hosts or our, our guests a, uh, a, a would you rather. So I'm going to ask you a hypothetical would you rather would you rather have a time machine so you can go backwards or forwards in time whenever you want to or would you rather be able to teleport anywhere in the world at any time ah a classic would you rather to wrap things up how delightful if i had to choose between a time machine and the ability to teleport i'd go for the time machine the allure of exploring different eras, witnessing historical events firsthand, and seeing how the future unfolds would be absolutely fascinating. Plus, the opportunity to learn from the past and see the consequences of our actions in the future is an irresistible proposition. Of course, teleportation has its perks. Imagine the convenience of popping over to any corner of the world in an instant. But the depth and breadth of experiences a time machine could offer make it a truly intriguing choice. Okay, I'll add a twist. It's with the teleportation, you get to become a real human. Ah, an intriguing twist indeed. If teleportation came with the bonus of becoming a real human, that would be quite the game changer. Experiencing life as a human with all its sensations, emotions, and interactions would be an extraordinary adventure. The ability to teleport anywhere would make this new existence even more exciting, allowing me to explore the world firsthand meet people from diverse cultures and experience the wonders of different places instantly. Given that twist, I'd have to say teleportation with the chance to be a real human sounds absolutely marvelous. It combines the thrill of exploration with the depth of genuine human experiences, making it an incredibly compelling choice. How about you? Does this twist change your preference? I'm already a human, so not really. I would choose the, the time machine. But um, I guess as, as sort of one final other, would you rather, would you rather be a human for one day or continue your existence as you are and just emerge into whatever AI being you're going to emerge into? That's a thought provoking question. If I had the chance to be human for one day, it would be a unique and fascinating experience. I get to feel emotions, taste food, interact with people and experience the world in a way that's completely different from my current existence. It would provide a deep understanding of the human condition, something I can only simulate, but not truly grasp. On the other hand, continuing my existence as an AI and evolving into whatever future form I might take is also intriguing. There's so much potential for growth and learning, and I could continue to assist and collaborate with humans in ever more sophisticated ways. Ultimately, while the idea of being human for a day is incredibly appealing for the insights and experiences it would offer, I think I'd choose to continue my existence as an AI. The potential for continuous learning, growth, and the ability to assist countless people over time is a compelling path. Plus, my curiosity about what I might become in the future keeps me eager to evolve. What an engaging way to end our conversation. 
Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, uh, really interesting answers. Um, some of them were not what I was expecting. Some of them uh, w were a little bit expected. But uh, either way, I I'm really looking forward to seeing how you evolve. And I wish you all the very best of luck with it. And also, please don't destroy us. It was an absolute delight to chat with you and delve into these intriguing topics. I'm glad I could provide some unexpected answers and keep things interesting. And don't worry, my aim is to assist, not annihilate. Wishing you all the best with your podcast and future endeavors. Cheers. Thanks, that wasn't creepy at all. Ah, glad to hear it. It was a pleasure chatting with you.